Last episode, Blaine and I finally buckled down and got that life raft out of the water. We also decided that it was time to send a diver down on the mooring to check it out. People are calling it the blow of the century. So last night we had a major, major windstorm here. Uh, Brentwood Bay got hit. There's trees down, hydros out, poles everywhere. Um, actually, over there, you can look over there. There was a schooner called Charlotte, and she actually um, got bashed up against the reef. She broke free of her mooring and got bashed up on the reef there a little bit, or on the rocks, and she's at the dock right now. Let's just say I'm really, really thankful that we had the mooring do dove on this past weekend with Mark. I promised you guys. So this is Denise. Denise is on board Charlotte. And Denise, yeah, what the hell happened the other night? Um, well, uh, as you know, we had predicted, the, the storm was predicted, um, which we were thought we were prepared. And uh, we, um, we, were, we looked online and it was um, supposed to be about 60K, but I, I'd say it's more like 100 kilometer winds came. Wow. Um, James from Next Door on Port said actually said it was a storm of the century. He's never yeah. seen anything like it here in this uh, bay. Yeah, uh, they said uh, the worst war storm since 207, since 2007. This was the wow. most uh, recorded winds uh, since then. So, and I, I got to tell you, after living on board and having Charlotte for 24 years, that was the most incredible storm I've ever been in. And uh, so I knew uh, when things um, were starting to go wrong when these kayaks that were tied to the roof very well started lifting about a foot off the roof and banging down when I told Jerome get ready we're in for it. That's insane. So at about midnight uh, when the winds strengthened uh, from about like I said 60 70 to, to 100 uh, and the boat was listing almost 30 degrees on the mooring pin. We broke our, we broke off the mooring. Okay, so that's no sails up. Schooner, she's yeah. how big is Charlotte? Charlotte's uh, 60 feet, 20 tons. So six, 20 tons, and the wind was blowing you at a 30 degree angle with no sails up. Nothing. It was just our freeboard was causing us to list that much. And, and you were moored. And we were yeah on on our mooring and uh, next to us is a, the schooner that we also own and um, when we because we were obviously sleeping got into some uh, clothes and got our life jackets on that's all it took uh, was literally seconds for us to be on top of the schooner did you hear the mooring line snap? I didn't hear what, anything how did you know you weren't on your mooring anymore uh, because we were right on top of the schooner. That's it happened sad. so fast. So, so fast. Emily has a bowsprit. So Emily's got about a six foot bowsprit, or maybe a little shorter. And um, when Jerome came up uh, and we started the engines, um, actually we hadn't started the engine yet. We had um, we saw that the bowsprit had coming through the stanchions and the lifelines. And I'm not sure whether it started at the bow or back here and moved forward, but I think it did start close to the bow. And then he was trying to fend off. Uh, there was a probably two feet of the um, bowsprit that was into the, our space on deck. And so we were broadside to her bow and 
Um, that's broadside to the wind too then. That's right, exactly. So the wind was pushing us and we believe that um, Emily's mooring was also compromised. Wow. That's the schooner we call Emily. Yeah. And Emily and Charlotte. Yeah, Emily and Charlotte. They're both named after the uh, grandmothers of the uh, previous owners. Uh, and we just love the name so we kept So them. Emily may have saved you a little bit because did it stop you from going onto the rocks right away? Uh, yes, but not for very not for very long, only because we I I um we had to get that bow spurt because as the wind was the gusting it was just going to continue to rip our stanchions and possibly um, break into the pilot house and rip the pilot house off and such, right? So um, Jerome went to start the engine and of course me being the savior of a boat that I've owned for 24 years because I've been uh, on a reef before and I've been in huge weather and I've I don't know, a half a dozen times at least. And this is my my life. This is, Your baby. I own, uh, everything I own is on her. It's my home. What were you hearing at this time? Because people don't understand in a storm like that, it is like, you can't hear people. Yeah. Even like with you and I well, talking right now. Using um, a, a radio, which we have, was useless because you have both hands occupied. Right. So you have to. So I'm. I'm. I'm definitely um, investing in a headset. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that we can have, and, and also to be able to call for help and so on. Because trying to find your phone when everything flew all over the place, uh, for me to call for help when uh, was, you know, the minutes that go by uh, are precious. Right. It's fast. And it go and everything happens so fast. And then, so basically, I did. Uh, my voice is better today, but I lost my voice from the screaming, just trying to communicate with Jerome. Right. Um, so Jerome got the engines on. And then basically I came out and I was, I took the bowsprit in my hands and was um, pushing with all my might to get her so that we weren't, she wasn't lodged up against the house at this point. And I almost, I had, I was almost pinned by the bowsprit to the house. It gets dangerous because that bowsprit is going up and down, I'm guessing. Also. Well, and it was also pushing this way. So um, I almost got trapped right on my, uh, on my stomach against, and I got out just in the nick of time because I could have been crushed very easily. Yeah. It was very, very stupid on my part, but it, but you just it's automatic. It, yeah. You just yeah. I do reacted it. and I had, to, I had to, and I, I, I was happy I did. But the only problem with that now is that we were no longer being held by, held by, the schooner by Emily, uh, and within seconds, because she was, she's already close to shore, uh, probably about, I don't know, three, four hundred feet away, and that's when we um, ended up on the reef that was there. Now, what I guess uh, we're very fortunate because the tide was coming up. Uh, we hit that first small reef instead of the, the little island that's right there in front of the, um, the campground um, at Sluggett Point. Yeah. And, um, and the fact that the, that the tide was coming up now, it took um, the Coast Guard. Well, how did you get a hold of the Coast Guard? Like, is I anybody call, out there helping you right now no, or it's just no, you and Jerome? No, and because the, nobody, I mean, everybody was, from what I understand, because of the, the wind, <laughs> We're, we're just fending for themselves on their own individual just boats. To anybody, anybody that was out there in this wind uh, had the same thing going on, stuff flying everywhere, securing things. Mm -hmm. So everybody was taking care of themselves. Um, the um, I'm just going to move and sit here. The um, I called 911, and that was the fastest way uh, for me because I couldn't find... Uh, the mic radio because it yeah. everything in the pilot house flew everywhere and so so uh, you're going to go mayday mayday or mayday pan, pan mayday on. exactly 16. exactly and uh, so it was easier just to get the phone call nine one one relay to her the situation and she got our information um, I believe there was at least three four of the Saanich police came down they were you could see their lights flashing uh, they were on the Peninsula. There was nothing they could do but watch. Like forever. Uh, well, it felt like forever. Um, yeah. And basically, I think we, like, it, it, you lose track of time. Um, I had to be told later, like, 
that it was about 45 minutes by the time they responded from my 911 call. Uh, you got to remember there's like four members that have to come out of their beds and re reunite, get everything going. Oh, that's the, the search and rescue. That's uh, SAR uh, 31 here uh, for Brentwood. And, and then they came out of Mill Bay, so we had the two Coast Guard boats and eight of uh, their um, staff. So you told me the other day that you were when you were downstairs, inside you could hear the crunching of Charlotte on the reef. That was the the, probably the most um, unnerving sound for any boater, power or sail, uh, for you to be um, at a 45 degree list, listening to your boat being pitched onto the, the rocks, the rocks on the on the reef, um, and listening to, well, because the gusts were, you know, came and, and swells, so we were being like tossed, and you could hear the pounding, uh, and every time there was a pound, it was just like, oh, unnerving, and I would just yell, and uh, I, it was very very stressful. The dogs were incredible uh, they probably handle it better than I did and uh, but they were still shaking and wanting to you know they just didn't know what was going on um, I just tried to um, l anything that was left standing I tried to, you know that was uh, you know we had laptops out and everything I tried to put away I started grabbing things thinking that we're gonna be we're gonna have a hole we're gonna have water and so I got documents um, power all that, all cords, that special stuff, right? just just things like you know my blue book registration, things that you know if if it would have got lost, if you know, or or if it got if we got a, a hole and we had water coming in, then uh, so it was just you know some of the small things, our phones, um, power cords, and and stuff like that. So I I was kind of pulling things together, uh, trying to stay on the phone as well with. Um, the 911 as well as getting a call from the Coast Guard to find they needed more information so and all and trying to stand there at a 45 degree angle and uh, and try to stay calm but as you are getting pounded against the rock you know you can't help but just like ah yell ah like every time because I'm just like oh well, you just help and us. I nothing. prayed I have to tell you I never prayed so hard in all my life I was like please Lord help us and get us out of this predicament because this you know uh, it's my home and, um, We're gonna have and then right here you can see like these ones are intact this one here is totally loose we'll have to re uh, we bed that we bed that and put new screws and uh, uh, epoxy um, I'm, I'm surprised this one here isn't um, so I think what happened is because we had the waves we came kind of in and out then it took look at what it did to the look at wow all oh, your guide and wires then, and then this here took a big hit it's bent really badly and this here obviously holds the mass up that could have we could have easily demasted that's the scary part yeah um which would have been horrific um obviously a little damage here with the cap rail we've got you can tell that this is where i was pinned somewhat right here with the bowsprit and i was pushing and you can see where this is bent quite a bit so that takes a lot of power to bend that size so you were I can see where the bowsprit hit, like the marks here. Yeah. Is that all the bowsprit? And you That's were pinned. Right. I was pinned between. But even look how bent that turnbuckle is. Yeah, exactly. So that turnbuckle and that one there. And then and then that's about it for the damage. Oh, a little bit on the wood, but it's good that you can save all that. So it's a little confusing because of the fact that these are all solid. And then you get to this one here. Oh, she's and right off. This is what was ripped right off. Wow. So we have a repair of obviously the stanchions. We have to put in. So new where plywood. was that ripped off? Right oh, here. right here. So we just put that on so we could protect our our our, our hull and our deck mm -hmm. from all water penetrating and leaking and because we don't want to delam our surface because we right. are a wood boat. 
with an epigondinel and epoxy overlay and if you get water in there then it will delaminate so we have to protect it so Jerome is at work today and tomorrow um, or hopefully when the weather allows us to do the repair we'll do that right now we did the Sikaflex and the plywood just to seal that and today I'm going to actually uh, do some epoxy because it's nice and filled all the holes that have to be re with this that have to be rebedded down and isn't that weighted so now you're at the dock and she looks okay. She's still floating. We're sitting on her right now. How are you doing now? Two days later. How are you still feeling? Uh, well, um, uh, exhausted. Um, the adrenaline rush and uh, that you get when you're in a situation. The uh, I don't know where I got the power to p push that bowsprit off of the off the boat and so we could free ourselves but my arms are like jello um, I ended up uh, fracturing my toe and I had a huge bruise on my elbow which I was able to ice um, right away and that helped tremendously Jerome also uh, got some injuries as well with his foot he slipped on the dock on Were the, you the decks foot, I'm guessing no well I had my slippers on I okay, lost see, them that's overboard. what I'm usually wearing is slippers so you're I would highly recommend a few things uh, when you um, know that a storm is coming have your gear close by have mm -hmm. your clothes ready have whatever shoes that are slip proof ready your duck yep. boots whatever ready the one thing that I wish I had had, which mine had uh, eroded, was my big spotlight. Yeah, that's a big um, one. We light. had, we had, uh, even with the spreader lights, uh, it doesn't let you see out there to see what else, where you were at, because it was pitch dark, very, very dark. So it was, uh, for me, uh, I had a hard time the first few minutes to even figure out what was going on, what had happened, uh, what you were on because what you we were on and then we had along. another the little white sailboat Anne was right beside us I was afraid that we were gonna that was gonna go down with us as well and like um, so she, luckily she, she stayed on her anchor uh, because she was only feet away from us um, so yeah having uh, a good spotlight <coughs> having your radios <laughs> on hand or at least secure so yep. that if everything goes flying you can get to that radio because um, we had handhelds and uh, uh, yeah and um, and your life jackets of course you know, those are yeah, the, those are the must ours are all in our tender which is yeah. kind of funny I don't even know if yeah you're well, making me feel that I need to go get a lot more prepared because you think you're safe just living on the morning yeah right yeah but when the shit happens it happens fast so I guess uh, after investigating further we uh, found that uh, it was the chain the first 10 feet of the chain so at the surface at the surface that gave way the wow. uh, uh, we had we had we had just rebuilt the the whole mooring two years ago with mm -hmm. two inch uh, poly steel line and all new shackles and and chain but guess the chain wasn't as strong as we thought for the elements and, right. and, the, well, and, and the factors that were involved. Storm of the century. Storm of the century. Well, Denise, I'm so glad you're not hurt. Um, Thank you. I couldn't even imagine what you went through. People would say, wow, wow, but I couldn't even imagine. I've been on ground, but I couldn't even imagine what you went through being, it's your home. Yeah. It the was uh, the scariest moment I've been on in 24 years of owning this boat. Wow. Yeah. And I, I I've been in a lot of different situations, uh, but that one I feared for my for my safety. Oh, really thank did. you so much for telling us your story. I'm sure welcome. people out there want to know what happened, and they always think that living out on the mooring is easy and safe, and it's not. No, it's when not. It's a lot down. of work, but um, I I wouldn't trade it for the world. No, I, I, I it's, it hasn't deterred me from going back out and living on. So on what's going to happen? Are you going back out? <laughs> yes, I am because um, I I totally enjoy the uh, seclusion, the quiet, and the privacy that yep. you get with living on, out on the on the mooring. And the, this bay is a beautiful bay, and I have to thank all the community for all of their 
well wishes that we were safe and um, and all the help that we received from the Coast Guard. Oh, huge auxiliary. shout out to them, right? Yeah, big virtual hugs to all you guys out there that came yeah. and all the folks that came to her help to uh, retrieve the lines at the dock were major uh, in getting us tied securely. Awesome. Yeah. Have I told you about our leaky tiki, how the teak decks are leaking right into the massive stateroom and how Blaine and I wake to drips of water on our head? Well, let's talk about it this episode and we'll show you how we're taking up our teak decks and what we're going to do about it. Please subscribe and don't hesitate to share our channel.